Now, okay. Welcome to Monday, April 12. It's our class session of elementary statistics. And as we just basically warmed you up on last week, the topic this week is entirely linear regression. And I put and trivia here because when it comes to linear regression, there is more trivia than you could shake a stick at. And I can show you where to find it all on your calculator to double check your work. But it's kind of interesting how these puzzle pieces fit together. Now, outside of that, I'm almost finished reading your exam two and I'll probably return those two tomorrow sometime during the day. And we'll give you more information about that when you get your paper back. I'll return those to your folders and I'll post an exam key and your current grade report with that. You have a homework you're handing in tomorrow. You have Newton Alta assignments recommended due by tonight, and that's through 26. But the big deadline in Newton Alta, all of your assignments, you have to complete those by Monday, April 26. So that's two weeks from today. So if you have to do any catching up at all in those, you have two weeks left to do it. After you hand in this homework tomorrow night, I'll post homework number 11. That will be our last written homework because really we just have two weeks to go and then into the semester exam time. So we're really near the end. The written homeworks, you're gonna get your last one tomorrow night, Newton Alta assignments. Make sure you got them completed by April 26. And as we approach the last exam and the end of the course, I'll give you some more details there, but that's just a quick update. Okay. I've got a couple pictures here prepared for you that I'm going to put on my paper here. And just have to find them scattered on my desk. Good, good. And then we'll get started going. So I want to do two things with you today. I'm going to do a problem similar to one in the book to help you get the basics of linear regression, but I'm almost gonna show you on your calculator where you get all the trivia of linear regression. But first I wanna play a kind of a visual game with you to make you understand visually what someone's job is when they're doing linear regression. And the game that I'm gonna play with you is just with five, six, seven points. The homework problem, 10 or 11 points that we're gonna to do together. But if someone was doing this for real, for money, they might be dealing with hundreds of points, maybe thousands of points. But that's when the computer calculator would be kicking in. It doesn't matter whether you're dealing with 10 points or 100 points. It's the idea that you have to visualize. So first, let me take you to our website to show you 
where you can get this worksheet that I'm about to share with you. So let me share screen. Let me share web browser and navigate to our website. And make sure I'm sharing that with everyone and recording it. Very good. So we're in week 14. We're just going to study all these trivia words about linear regression. Notice, by the way, that this is week 14, week 15. Next week is the last week that we do anything learning new. And then after that, it's time for the exam. So we really are at the end of the course here. Under week 14, under handouts, I posted a new handout this morning that I use when I talk about linear regression. It's called Linear Regression Introduction. So if you click on that, you can click on that at home. You can print it out later. You can write on it on your computer screen, whatever you want to do. This is the worksheet that I'm going to share with you on a piece of paper in a second. So other than that, you know our routine. Homework 10 due tonight, homework 11 posted when you turn in homework, or homework 10 due tomorrow night, excuse me. Homework 10 posted, homework 11 posted when you turn in homework 10. And that's pretty much all standard stuff. We do have a few fancy formulas here in regression, but they're all built into your calculator. So you can use your calculator to check your work. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing the browser and go back to my paper. So let's play a game. And for this game, I'm gonna put the sheet of paper under my camera. And the words are a little bit small, not as easy to read. I get that, but you can download the sheet of paper yourself later and play this game. And it's not the reading of the words so much as the picture I want to draw in your mind. So I'll read this to you. Plot these points, minus three, one, two, four, five, six, three, seven, minus four, minus two, minus one, two, in the plane on this graph paper. And draw a line to try to find the best fit to these six points. The question is that we introduced at the end last week. If the points don't line up, what could you possibly mean by best fit? How could you call one line any better than any other line? Okay. So let's do this on the graph paper. So I'm gonna slide this piece of paper up. First I'll number the paper so we can scan it later. But on my graph paper, I'm going to draw an X and Y axis, and then I'm going to plot those points. So three, six, eight, three, six. I'm just counting what kind of scale I'm going to use. Here's a horizontal axis. We'll call that the X axis. And then one, two, three, one, two, three. We'll call this the Y axis. And I'll plot these points with you right now, even though the list of points is off the camera. Minus three and one. That's back three and up one. I'm using one box as one unit as my scale. I will write scale on the axes in a second. Two and four, counting carefully. Five and six, let's put a dot. Three and seven. Got it. Minus four and minus two. That's back four down two. Okay, one more point. Minus one and two. So here's six points on this piece of paper, according to the names of the points that I was given. 
And now I'm going to mark some scale. Since one box was worth one unit, I'll say count five, call it five, count 10, call it 10. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I go one, two, three, four, five minus. One, two, three, four, five minus. And now here's a game we're going to play. And at first it sounds crazy, then it sounds simple. And then it sounds like, but who could ever win that game? So the first thing I do to you is say, draw a line through these six points. And you come back to me and say, that's impossible. I can't draw a line through the six points because they don't line up. So that's the part that sounds crazy. Well, then I'll say to you, you're right, or I'm sorry. I want you to draw a line through these six points as good as you can. Draw a line on the paper that fits the six points the best that you can. And you're not certain maybe what someone means when they say draw the best line you can, but you're a little more willing to try. So you can get out your ruler or your straight edge. I don't have a ruler with me, but I have a like a straight edge from a protractor. And I kind of fiddle and experiment with the points like, oh, should I draw the line there? Oh, should I draw the line there? Should I draw the line there? Oh, I noticed that these three points kind of line up. Maybe I'll draw the line through those three points. But what I want to say to you is, if I gave this, if we were in a classroom, this is how I would do it. We've got 10, 15, 20 people in the classroom. I each give you your piece of paper. It's not hard to imagine that each person would give me a different line. And that each person would feel that their line was the best. So here's our problem. If all of you say that your line is the best, and let's say that I actually did something like laid $5 on this. You know, whoever gets the best line gets five bucks. Well, then there's gonna be some fights breaking out like, no, my line's the best, my line's the best, my line's the best. So what are we gonna do about it? What we have to do is like find a way to keep score. Like, could we agree to a scoring system that everybody would be willing to live with, that nobody would complain about, or, you know, everybody can always complain about scores in sports. But, you know, if the rules are clear, there's usually not a problem. What hap when, when does a problem come up? When the rules aren't clear. You know, like NFL, very famous, you know, like what's a catch in the NFL touchdown. They struggled with that for several years. I don't know if they got it right even recently. But I will show you a scoring system that you would all agree to, and that's not hard to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line through these six points, one that I think fits best. Just my opinion. Now, since these three points line up, and in fact, this point is even close to those three points almost lining up, I think I'm going to draw straight through those three points. and pretend I was competing for the $5 too, I would proudly say, look, that is the best line possible. Nobody can beat that line. But now let's work out what the score might be. So for example, I hit three points dead on, right? But I also missed three points. For each of the points that I missed, let me draw a line from that point down to the line. Do you see that this first line here is a little more than two boxes long? Let me draw a line from this point to that line. That's exactly two boxes long. Let me draw a line from this point to the line. That's pretty small. It's certainly less than one box. Okay, step number two. Make those lines into squares. 
So for example, this line is two units long, right? So I'm gonna make a square that's two by two. It's gonna be our scoring system. This line is tiny, very small, not even one unit long, but I can make a tiny square right there. That square is less than a whole square, certainly. The square has four squares in it. There's no square right here because the line goes through that point exactly. There is no error. There's no error here. There's no error here. When you have an error, that error in this game is called a residual. It's just a fancy word for leftover. So the residual or the leftover or the error here is a little more than two and a quarter maybe. Let me draw a square, it's two and a quarter. I'm not drawing perfect squares, but I'm drawing good squares. Now, here's the score. Let's add up the area of all the squares that I drew. And remember, I only drew three squares because I hit three points dead on. For this first square, you say that that's easy because that square is exactly four units. But what is the area of this little square or this slightly bigger square? So let's make a new rule, right? We're laying down our rules in our game. Our game is called regression. I will say you have to count any square that your square touches on the grid. So for example, this square right here that we drew is a little more than two. When I draw a square out of that, how many squares do I touch? I actually touch four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Since it's less than three, I actually touch, and more than two, I actually touch nine squares. What about this tiny, tiny square right here? Well, it's certainly less than one in error. So when I draw a little square right there, the most squares I touch is one. Over here, my square had no area. It touched no other squares, no area, no area. So here's the score of my game is four plus one plus zero plus zero plus nine plus zero. My score is 14. Now, what are we gonna say about that? Remember, we have to agree to a way to keep score and there's a reward for the person who does best. So now everybody else is scrambling to count their squares and see if they can win, right? Let me draw another one for you. I prepared several of these blank ahead of time just so I could draw a couple for you. And I'll quickly jot down the points as I've used them before. So I know what they are. And I quickly jot down my scale. So everybody is oriented in the same way. And then I got a friend who says, no, I can do better than that. I'm gonna go this way. And my friend says, that is a better line than your line. But now we have a way to keep score. So let's check this out. Sorry, shook the camera. Let's draw the error bars. These are the residuals. 
Now notice my friend missed almost every point. On the other hand, it kind of wiggled it a little bit closer in some ways, right? So let's draw the boxes and touch all the box, count all the boxes that are touched. There's no boxes touched if it goes to that point. This one is one, two, up to there. So everybody agrees, because we gotta, if we're gonna play by the rules, we have to agree that I'm following the rules. So everybody agrees I drew some decent squares, fair squares. And now we'll count up how many squares they touch. Like this square touches one square. This square touches four squares because it's a little bit bigger than one unit. This is no squares. This one touches four squares. One, two, three, four squares. This one touches only one square. This one touches nine squares. Ooh, that's gonna cost him. Let's add up this person's score. One plus four plus zero plus four plus one plus nine. Now what is that? Five, 10, 19. Okay, so my friend came up with a line. It's a great line, but it doesn't beat my line. The score for my friend is 19. My score is 14. You see what this game is like? It's in fact, regression is exactly called what we're doing. Regression is often called least squares analysis. Because it's a game where you're trying to make a bunch of squares and come up with the least area you can. Now you could complain to me that this box right here is really less than one, that this box by here is really less than four. You can say, well, you're being very rough when you say count any box that my square touches. I agree with you, but then again, everybody's playing by the same rules. So it's fair. If you want me to count these areas closer, yes, I could. But that would require me to do some tighter measurements, something that I don't have time to do right now. So let me bring one other paper at you. Let's say I got another friend who's coming at this and saying, I think I can beat 14. So I got these dots plotted. This one's in blue. Let me advance my paper. And I will scan all these papers and put them into the web page later. I think what I'm gonna to try to do is, I'm trying to eyeball this. I like the idea of going through this point, but uh, I'm trying to make sure I don't build too big of squares. Let's see if I can do that. Got it, got it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to visualize this and it's not super duper easy to visualize. So give me a second. Here, let's try this line. I am not getting the thing I wanted to get. So let me back up and do this carefully so I don't screw it up. Well, I, I'm trying to be too perfect and that's always a mistake. So let me just draw a line.
Now, this may not be a perfect line, but let's try to add up the score. Here's one box. Here, it looks like I've got one box. Here's no boxes. Here, possibly one box. Here's the one box. And here's possibly four boxes. I'm saying possibly because I don't think I drew that very neatly, but I'm gonna take this as an example. So this is my friend's paper. What is her score? One plus one plus zero plus one plus one plus four. When I add this up, her score is one, two, three, four, eight. Okay, that is definitely better than my 14 and better than the other person's 19. So here's the question. Is this the best line? Now, the problem is we cannot sit here playing this for an hour and trying out different lines. Maybe I shouldn't go through that point at all, you know? Maybe I should wiggle it somewhere else in between. But there is a formula for the best line that I can show you that's already built into your calculator. So let's take this to the calculator and ask the calculator what it thinks is the best line. Okay, so for that purpose, I am going to share my calculator screen with you. Got it right here. May not have used this calculator since we did this problem last time. So let me clear that screen. Let me clear stats. I, this is not uh, so important. I could clear these two lists very quickly, but I sh told you that there was a way to clear lists quickly. Let's say you had five or six lists here, all being used. Let me show you how to clear multiple lists instantly. So uh, I got to figure out where it is. <laughs> So under stat, under setup editor, or clear list, that's what I want, clear list. And you can write one list here, like list one, but you can also say list one, comma, list two, comma, list three. You can put as many lists as you want here. So if you had four or five lists busy and full, even with many points, you could clear them all instantly by saying clear list under stats and then just name the list L1, L2, L3, L4, whatever you need. Okay, now it's done. Stat, edit. See those two lists are clear. Now I'm gonna put in the points that I just drew on the paper. The minus three, X values here in list one, Y values here in list two. So minus three, one, sorry, minus three, Oops, I got out of my editor. Try it again. Minus three, I have to hit that minus key on that keyboard. Two, five, three, minus one. Oh, minus four. And minus one, being careful to hit the minus key on the bottom of my keyboard. Okay, now let me enter the Y coordinates right here. They were one, four, six, seven, minus two, two. One, four, six, seven, minus two, and two. So now I've entered these points on my keyboard. I can graph them as X and Y points with a scatter plot under stat plot right here. So that's a second function stat plot. I can 
go into plot number one. We haven't done histograms or anything like that for a while, but this time I'm going to do a scatter plot. A scatter plot. Turn on plot number one. Choose the type scatter plot, and then the calculator says, "Well, what lists do you want me to use for the x and y values? List one, list two, okay. What kind of mark do you want? Let's just put a little circle or open square like that. Let's make it black." And then we hit graph. And I see absolutely nothing. <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? I may have a window that doesn't match what I did previously. Now I got two choices. I've already drawn this three or four times, right? <laughs> so I could choose a window that matches what I've already done. How about uh, minus three? Two, 10 on the y-axis and x-axis minus 5 to 10. Let's try it. Minus 5 to 10. Count by ones. Y-value minus 3, 2, 9. Count by ones. Now let's hit the graph. There's my points. And it looks just about the same way that I drew them on the paper. Notice the calculator screen is rectangular and I drew perfectly square on my paper. But here's the magic under the stats menu. There's a calculation called linear regression. Actually, there's two. And it's not a particular which one you use. It doesn't make particular, but we're going to use number eight. There's another place I can find it too, but let's start with number eight. The calculator says, what points do you want me to fit? Now remember, I gotta say list one and list two. No frequency list. And now here's the really powerful thing. I can just calculate the best fitting line. Calculator says the best fitting line has an intercept of 2.70, 2.71 and uh, slope of 0.88. That's <coughs> actually going to be hard to draw with my bare hands. So I'm going to try it again. Linear regression number eight. And do you see I've skipped over this feature called store regression equation. What I can have the calculator do is put that formula into the y equals menu. So with my cursor under store regression equation, I hit variables y variables, function variables, y1. And then when the calculator calculates this, it'll store it in y1. Here's the best line possible, but I want to see it on the screen. See how it was stored in y1 with all the digits. Didn't skip anything. Now let's do the graph. Uh, just for effect, why don't we make the graph red. There we go. And let's graph. Calculator says that was the best line. And notice that the calculator did try to come close to this point. Now I could count the squares here more like 411141. 411 one for one. That's a 12. I don't know where my friend got an eight on the paper earlier right here, but I think I didn't draw this correctly. I believe the true answer is closer to 12. Now you say, oh yeah, but you're not counting the exact areas of those squares that are left behind. I didn't count the exact areas, but the calculator did. So this line that we drew in line red is literally called the best fitting line. It is the winner. So I was trying to draw this picture in your mind. And I don't know if you watch the golf on TV over the weekend. I watched a little bit of the golf tournament on TV over the weekend. It was the master's tournament. I probably go on a golf course once in a year, maybe twice in a year with my dad sometime or my son, my daughter, my wife. 
I golf very, very irregularly. So when I get done with nine holes, I'm probably sitting there at about 90. Those guys did 18 holes in 70 <laughs> shots. And I cannot, you know, whoop and yell at the TV, hey, I beat that way better. I'm way better than you. I got 90 shots. You only got 70. No, what is about golf? Golf low score wins. And in this game that I just described to you, the low score wins. And this red line, according to the formulas the calculator used, is the low score. It is the best possible score. Now, I'm just drawing pretty pictures with you. But how do we really calculate the line that has the best possible score? I'm going to go to another screen for you on the calculator. So remember, I did that with calculate linear regression, a plus bx. If all you want is the line itself, then that's all you need to use. There's the line, y-intercept, slope. But if you want all the trivia and data about that line, there is another button you can use under stats, not under calculate, but under tests. Now, over the course of the semester, we've almost gone through every one of these now. It's way down at the bottom. It's called linear regression, linear regression t-test. So that's what we're going to focus on today and Wednesday. When you do this test, it'll give you the best fitting line and a lot of facts about it that we're going to use. So list L1, list L2 still lets you store the answer anywhere you want to. So let's store the answer this time under y variables function y2. But when you calculate, we'll tell you later what the beta and the rho mean. Later means today or possibly Wednesday. When you calculate this time, you get lots of data. You do get the A and B, the same A and B that we used earlier. Yeah? But you also get some other statistics here. T, P, now that sounds like a T test. P, that sounds like a P value. Degrees of freedom is four. Uh, I'm trying to think about whether I like that or not. I think I do. S, R, R squared. You know, I get a lot of information about this line that I just drew. I also get the same line. At least I hope I get the same line. So let's go and graph it and find out. There's the line, just the same as I did in Y1. If I color this one blue, I guess I don't have to draw it to prove to you that it's the same line because the numbers certainly look the same. But if we graph that, there's the best fitting line going through those points. Okay. Now, here's our goal for today and Wednesday. We need to explain on this test way down at the bottom. And remember, how do you go way down to the bottom? You can use the up arrow key to just hop to the bottom. I need to, expl I need to explain what all these statistics under the linear regression t-test mean. What do all these numbers mean? Beta, rho, t, p, degrees of freedom, a, b, s, R and R squared. We'll explain several of them today, and what we don't hit today, we'll hit next time. Okay, so I've got my cute little drawings here. I'm going to number them, and I'm going to make some question right here. Uh, this one seems too good to be true. Let me go back to my paper so you can see what I'm writing and why. 
My friend scored an eight. But this seems too good to be true. I'll show you why. Right over here, you know there's a very slight difference between having a one and having a four. If that box was slightly larger, then it touches four squares. Same right here. Same right here. So if I had pulled a couple of fours instead of a couple of ones, that score would have ballooned. Right, so I think this is too good to be true. And the calculator's line looked like it scored about a 12. Now remember, we're rounding off way too much, but I'm just giving you a feeling for how to play this game. So let, what I wanna do is just make sure I save these papers that I drew on so that you could look at them later if you like. Good, okay, so one, two, three, four, got it. So let's calculate. Uh, best fitting line or you can also call it this the more commonly people do call it the least squares regression line that's a mouthful but now you know why people call it least squares because you want the squares to add up to the least area. Okay, so I'm gonna use this example from the book. Slightly altered. So this example from the book is problem 59 and 12 two. But I am altering it. I'll show you why in that I just want to make something that's a little bit easier to draw. Usually I show you the book on my screen, but here it's gonna be okay to show you the problem itself. I'm counting years and I'm counting economic power for some, I don't know what economic power is, but I'll take the book's word for it. And notice everything's in thousands. Of course, years in thousands, economic power is in thousands. But you also notice that all the economic power numbers just have two digits and then zeros. And the years, yeah, I could count 1999, 2000 and so forth, but I'm gonna change these numbers so it'd be very simple to draw on a graph. You don't have to do it this way, but and if you're doing the homework problem, use the numbers they're giving you. But let's take this set of numbers. I'm gonna begin at 1998. So 1999 is year one. And I'm gonna count by thousands in the y-axis. So on the x-axis, I'm beginning with 1998. In the y-axis, I'm counting by thousands. And that changes, I'm just gonna read the numbers out of the book for you. That changes 1,700 to 1 1.7. And then I'm gonna put down the rest of the years. 2000 is two years after 1998. Then it skips to 2002, which is four years after 1998. And then it covers every year thereafter, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Let me move my paper. Up here. So 
So there's 11 years right here, but they skipped year number three. So that's good or bad, we'll have to find out. And then writing everything else in thousands, 1.7, 1.7, 2.3, 2.9, 3.0, 11. Somebody took a big jump. 9.5, 9.7, 9.8, 9.9. So the question in your mind is like, oh, you probably got lots of questions. Like these guys were going along pretty normal and then they jumped to 11. What's that look like? Uh, are these X and Y values related by a line? Maybe it would make absolutely no sense to draw a line through them. We're gonna have to graph and find out. Uh, what's another question you could have? What about that missing year, number three? Was someone just like not paying attention? Did, that, did they leave it off because they made a mistake? What if your boss said to you, oh, somebody left out year number three. I want you to make up a number that fits. Now, we're not gonna talk about the ethics of making up a number. That's not a good idea. But, but what if your boss said to you, Give me your best guess for what happened in year number three. You're certainly not going to guess seven or four. You're probably going to guess something between 1.7 and 2.3, right? Because it seems to be growing. But what's the best guess you could make? Remember, this is your boss you're talking to, and maybe your promotion's writing on it. Okay, let's draw these points and then find out how I can answer these questions. So I'm gonna, again, just draw a generous scale for X and Y, and then we'll label it as we need to. Now, one reason I chose the scale as I did, chose to alter these numbers, is so I can begin each axis at zero. I do not need to do that. There's nothing wrong with beginning an axis at somewhere other than zero, as long as you write down where you began it. I could have said begins at 1998. But this is gonna be a little bit easier to read here. Now let's call this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, and then on this axis, the vertical axis, we're apparently counting by thousands. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10,000, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15,000. I, I know we never got up to 15,000, but we'll just mark it as we drew it there. Now, I'm gonna find my pen cap so my pens don't dry out. Let's do a decent job of marking these points. Now, notice 1.7, 2.3, 4.0. I can mark that one, eight and 4.0. That looks like it's right here. But all the others are decimals. What am I supposed to do about that? Well, I'm supposed to do what I could ever do. I do the best I can. So 1.7, I'll put between one and two. A little bit closer to two, I think. You know, almost three quarters of the way. Let me make the dot thick. That way I'm off, no one will notice. Two, same 1.7. At least make them the same then. Now, remember you skipped three and you went to four, which was 2.3. Five was 2.9, that's nearly three. 
Six was 3.0. That's nice and exact. Uh, seven was 3.5. That's not hard to make. I already made eight and 4.0. Now nine and 11. Whoa, this is where I took that jump. So nine and 11 coming up here. 10 and 9.5 is not hard to draw. Oh, sorry, 9.5 is right there. It's not hard to draw, but I drew it wrong. Okay, notice we made an error and I'm not using pencil, so I just crossed it out with my red pen. I think if you are drawing something in pen and you make one error, that's okay. Make a couple errors, then the drawings are gonna to start to be really littered. So try not to make too many errors or start over. 9.7, 12 and 9.9. .9. Now, what are we looking at here? We're looking at some real life information. This was real life information about Cuba, about their gross domestic product. And for some reason, it was just growing pretty casually. And then it took a major jump and then it growing casually again. Now, we're not politicians. We're not economists. We don't know why it took a jump, although we could make some reasons up. But I'm not interested in why it took a jump. I'm interested in is can I draw a line that fits all these points except for the error? And can I draw a line that fits these points that I was given in the most honest way possible, the best fitting line? So now I'm going to appeal to my calculator and go get that line before I show you the formulas for that line. So let's enter this data in the calculator. So remember, I got my lists full of stuff and I showed you how to get rid of the list really quickly. Stat, clear list, L1, L2. Oops, I forgot a comma in there. Okay, so now let's go and do my lists again. Stat, edit, and now let's put in these numbers. One, two, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Now the numbers that went along with them, 1, 1.7, 1.7, 2.3, 2.9, 3.0, 3.5, 4.0, and then the big jump, 11, 9.5, 9 9.7, uh, 9.9. 9. Okay, uh, I've got the numbers in there and I'm ready to draw them. Now, instead of relying on me to put in a window to draw them well. Now, I'm gonna get rid of these two lines because what, they were from the old problem. So let's delete and delete, sorry. Let me delete that line, good. But how am I gonna graph these? Do you see that the window I used a second ago only fits some of the points? The other points are way up here, but I don't wanna screw up and just draw a line through these points, right? So under zoom, this is really handy. There's a choice called zoom stat. And zoom stat will take your points that you entered into the lists and make a window that fits all of them nicely and neatly. There. I didn't have to set any of these window left, right, up, down. I just hit zoom stat and the machine made a good window for these points. It doesn't look exactly like I drew them, but then again, remember I was drawing square units. 
now let's go to stat and let's calculate the line of best fit. And I'm gonna use this linear regression t-test on the bottom. List one, list two, frequency of each one is one. I'm gonna put the regression equation into y1 so I can put other things into y2 and y3 later. And then I'll calculate. Good, so here's all the data. And in a second, we'll start writing it down, telling you what it means and more down the screen. But under the y equals menu, there's the function, there's the line that fits best. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, maybe you had a different idea. Maybe I had a different idea, right? But I had to get these points down here and these points up here. So the calculator says, you know, you can wiggle it a little bit up, a little bit down, but I've got the best line. This is in fact the best line possible. Now let's figure out exactly where the calculator got that. I'm gonna draw it on my paper first, and I'm gonna to try to draw it on my paper. I can't draw it perfectly, but I'm gonna draw it as fairly as I can with my straight edge right here before we go back to our paper. Well, I got a little wiggle here off the screen, but I will write also in the paper what the line is. A plus BX. And the A, let me go back to my tests, was approximately what? And the B was approximately what? The A was approximately minus 0.89. I know I'm rounding off seriously, but let's keep that for right now. The B was 0.92. Again, I'm rounding off way too much, but I just wanna make a drawing. Now, that's almost a one-to-one -one slope. That's almost like over one, up one. And that's about what my black line looks like. Notice, minus 0 0.89 is almost at minus one y-intercept if I had continued the y-axis down here. So I tried to draw it as neatly as I could compared to what the calculator said. So where did the calculator, get this A and B. Oh, sorry, I wanna go back to my paper. And I think I was neither on paper nor calculator. Sorry, I'm not sure if that was working. Let me go back to the paper here. I think as far as my recording was, you might have been looking at my paper, but I don't think I was recording my paper yet. Uh, for those of you who are watching afterwards, watching the recording, you know how to fix that. Just get the copies of the paper that I post and you can follow along with the conversation. But I don't think I was recording my paper, even if I was showing it. Okay, so my bad on that. This is page number five. So where did the calculator get this A and B? That's one question I have. How about another question? Exactly how good is this line? Because unlike the problem we did earlier, this line looks like it missed a lot of points, you know, Aren't I supposed to hit lots of points? Uh, 
that's another question I want to ask. How about another question? What happened in 2003? Now remember, I started in 1998. So 2003 was x equals 5. Sorry, x equals 3. That's 2001. Yes, 2001 was the missing number. Now you're looking at my picture right here. Remember, I said to you that your boss came to you and said, make up a number for 2001. Well, you're not going to make up a number. No, what your boss said to you is, someone left out the data from 2001. Can you tell me about what 2001 should have been? Well, in that case, you could, remember this is three where the missing value is, you could just put a three in here and see what you get. What's minus 0 0.89 plus 0 0.92 times three. Well, that's 2.76, 1.96, 2.05. You know, I'm trying to do this in my head. That's probably not a smart idea. Minus 0 0.89 plus 0 0.92 times three. Calculator say 1.87 approximately. And when I fill in that dot there at 1.87, that's not a bad guess. Is 1.87 a good estimate for what happened when x was three? I think it's a pretty good estimate. It's between 1.7 and 2.3. It's not closer to 2.3. It's more closer to 1.7. It seems to be relatively in line with all these other ones. And then the trend upward happened. Then the big trend upward happened. Now, just so that I don't keep you in suspense or mystery, uh, this happened at, 2000, at x equals 9, which was about 2007. So. I think, and uh, you got to go look up the president or whatever, you know, but it's not always the president who makes decisions, right? I think around the late 2000, near 2010, in the end of that first decade, I think the US significantly reduced some sanctions on Cuba. And that allowed their economy to take a little jump. So this is not just some kind of accident or mistake. So sometimes that happens. If you change the conditions, you get radically different results, right? I think that might've been what happened, but you could go look that up historically. Okay, so here's some questions. I suppose we could have some more questions, but our very first question is, where did the calculator get this line A and B? Okay, so let me start to show you. I wanna get two things on the screen at once, which is not so easy on my paper. Let's take a look at this and I'm gonna switch colors of pen. I've got these X numbers, right? I've got these Y numbers, right? And think about all the things you've done so far at this class mean, standard deviation, uh, any number of tests and so forth, right? Does this line have anything to do with what we've done before? So let's say I did some calculations with this data and I started to write down, well, I've got 11 points that's pretty easy to see. What if I added up all the X values? Remember, this is the symbol for adding up all the X values. 
If I add up all the x values, you could just add these in your head or you could use a calculator. Don't add the three. Three is not part of that line. So we got three, seven, 12, 18, 25, 33, 42, 52, 63, 75. So that would tell you right away, what's the mean? The mean 75 divided by 11. Now I'm gonna to appeal to my calculator on this. The calculator says 6.8. One, eight, two. How about adding up all the Y's? Now, there's no way I'm going to do that because you got these decimals, right? But I'll let the calculator do it. Calculator says 59.2. And then what's the Y mean? It's 59.2 divided by 11. Again, I'm not going to do that with my fingers and toes, but I let the calculator do it. And the calculator says 5.3818. So now I'm ready to show you the first magic. Let's go back to a graph and mark 6.8 and 5.3. The 6.8 is about right here. 5.3 is about right here. If you mark X bar and Y bar, the means of the two lists on this graph, do you see that they are a point on that line? The X bar and Y bar are like the anchor point on that line my best fitting line. That's strange, that's unusual, that's interesting. It's kind of a surprise, it's kind of a victory, right? Well, now that I got one victory like that, I wanna go back and fill in a lot more numbers. What's the standard deviation? What's this and everything like that, right? So where am I gonna get all the data about list X and list Y, I'm gonna to go to my one variable statistics. So let's go back to calculator. Let's clear these button pressing things here. And remember, I have my two lists right here, but I can have the calculator do mean, standard deviation, everything for each of the lists individually. Or I could have it do both of the lists at the same time. So let's go to stat, calculate, two variable statistics. And let's look at what the calculator tells me. List one, list two, no frequency list, calculate. Look at those numbers, the X bar, 68182. That's exactly what I said a second ago. The Y bar near the bottom, 53818, exactly what we said. The sum of the Ys, 59.2, right? That's the last number on the screen. Some of the X is 75. The N is 11. It wasn't an accident that I wrote these on the paper. I was thinking about this screen. So why we're here, why don't we write down some more numbers? This screen also says, sum the X squareds, and you get 641. That is square each X and then sum it. Calculator says sum the Y squareds and you get, I gotta go down the screen, 460.08. What's the standard deviation of X? Now remember I'm looking for standard deviation that's S of X right here. 3.600, 3.601, if I round off. All these numbers are going to serve me in a second. What's standard deviation for Y? 3.7613. 
Good. So these numbers right here are actually good enough to calculate the A and B that gave me the line of best fit. And I'll give you the formulas for these. Just hang on a second. Oh, I need one more number from that screen. And do you see right there, calculator says, okay, I am not showing the calculator screen with you again. So I don't know how I did that. I have to go back to the calculator screen. Let's share the calculator screen. And then let me show you where I got the screen. So somehow I didn't hit the share button. Sorry. So uh, let's go back to our statistics list. Edit. You see our two lists. And then I got all these numbers off the statistics list. Calculate two variable statistics. Here we go. Now list one, list two, calculate, go. That's where I got all these numbers. X bar, some of the X's, some of the X squareds, standard deviation, N, Y bar, some of the Y's, some of the Y squared, standard deviation. And here, sum of X times Y. So what should I need that for? What happens if you multiply each X, Y, and add those together? The calculator says that that's 522.8. I'm gonna write that on my paper. Okay, good. Now, what was that other test we performed? Stats, tests, linear regression t-test. When someone says t-test, you think hypothesis test. And so it is, but right now I'm more interested in the linear regression part. So let's go right down the A and B from the screen. This one, list two. Leave the row not equal to zero right now. Uh, store it in Y1, we already did that, but calculate. The A is minus 0 0.8856. Let's be a little bit more specific. The B is 0 0.91 and remember, this is the y-intercept of the line of best fit. And this is the slope of the line of best fit. But where did it get those numbers? And the book's got several formulas, but I want you to check this one out. If I take the n times the sum of the xy's product minus the product of the sum of the x's and the sum of the y's, and then divide by, these are all facts I have up here, divide by what? n times the sum of the x squareds minus the sum of x squared let me fill in all those numbers. Now I got to go back to my paper, sorry. So I'm trying to show you where the calculator got this 0.9192. This is a formula for B using these numbers that we jotted down above. Let me fill in those numbers, N was 11 the sum of the x's times the y's was 522.8. Subtract some x times some y, that's 75 times 59.2. Divided by n, 11 again, sum of the x squareds was what, 641? and subtract the sum of x squared itself. So the sum of x was 75, let's square that. 
Now, I'm going to do that side by side on the paper with the calculator here. Maybe I'll raise the calculator a little bit. I don't got a thick book to do that handy. But I want to show you that if you multiply these numbers out, divided properly, you'd get 0.9192. So let's try it. I'll try to hold the calculator steady. 11 times 522.8. Subtract 75 times 59.2. That's the numerator. Divided by parentheses. 11 times 641. My hand's not shaking. I'm just pressing the buttons and holding the calculator in the air. Sorry. Minus 75 squared. That's the point nine one nine two, et cetera. Now I'm going to let you take B straight off the calculator. But if you had to calculate it, this is the formula you'd use. What's formula used for A? If you had to calculate A, you could use the mean values for X bar and Y bar. And the reason why is because X bar and Y bar fit on this line. So they have to go through that intercept. It's easy to get the Y bar and the X bar here because I've already calculated them. And I've got the B right here on my computer screen. So let's take Y bar, which was, zoom, 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 53818. Excuse me, and subtract B, which is that number, times X bar, which is 6.8182. Now I'm rounding off, which is entirely unfair, right? But let's try it out. 0.8856, that was the A with a negative sign. Now I also want to show you some other calculator magic. These numbers, the B, the Y bar, the X bar, they've already been calculated by the calculator for this example. So if I go to variables, statistics, and ask for Y bar, which is number five, the calculator will tell me what Y bar is. So I could actually calculate A by having the calculator fill in these three numbers. Variables, statistics, Y bar is number five. Subtract, variables, statistics. Where's B? Oh, B's not here. Uh, why is B not here? Because B belongs to the equation, the regression equation. There's B. And now X bar, I'm gonna put X bar right there. This is a little bit too small to see, but I'm gonna hold it up to your screen in a second. Variables, statistics. X bar right there. So I could have the calculator do Y bar minus X bar times B. And it's the same minus 0 0.8856. So I don't want these numbers that the calculator is doing to be a mystery to you. I want you to know that you have a formula for calculating them. The calculator told us these things in red but we've just verified it by calculating them. Okay, what we're doing is kind of getting to the end of the day. So I'm gonna to have to pick this up next time. The numbers that I haven't told you about yet, and we're gonna explain, are R and R squared. R is called the correlation coefficient. R is how good does that line fit? R tells you how tight is the line to the points. R squared. Then we got a T score that we're gonna use the hypothesis test on. And we got a P value from the hypothesis test. The calculator does that automatically, but we gotta explain what that is. Then we got degrees of freedom for this 
set of data. And here we got to decide what we're going to use for degrees of freedom. And then you got one more number here called S. S is not the standard deviation of X. It's not the standard deviation of Y. S is called the standard deviation of the residuals, standard deviation of the error. How, how much spread do you have in the error? So next time I'll explain what those numbers are and what they mean in this picture. Okay. You finish up your homework number 10. I'll get homework number 11 posted in which you'll be practicing things like this. And then we'll get on to that next time. So you guys have a good day. Remember, if the recording wasn't perfect today and you see my icon instead of my paper or my calculator screen, just go and get these pages that we are copying and putting on our website and then you could follow along that way, even if it's not perfect. Okay, my apologies for that. I'll see you next time and you have a nice afternoon.